There's an easy knock against the space dreams of Jeff Bezos and his rocket company, Blue Origin. In its 24th year of existence, the company has yet to launch a single thing to orbit. By contrast, SpaceX, the rocket company started by the other high-profile space billionaire Elon Musk, completely dominates the launch market today. But now Blue Origin's ambitions to change the story are once again on the rise as they unveiled their new billion-dollar rocket aimed at stopping SpaceX this September. Do you think it'll happen? Can Blue Origin's new rocket stop the SpaceX's Starship? How did Elon react? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Recently, in a presentation at a meeting of Planetary Protection Committee of the Committee on Space Research in London on April 24th, Nick Bernardini, NASA's Planetary Protection Officer, listed a September 29th date for the launch of the Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorer Escapade mission. Escapade is a pair of small sats that will go into orbit around Mars to measure the interaction of the planet's magnetosphere with solar wind. Notably, Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket has been selected by NASA as the launch vehicle for the Escapade mission. In February 2023, the company was awarded a 20 million task order through NASA's venture class acquisition of dedicated and rideshare contract for the mission. Nick Bernardini said they're slated to be launching September 29th with Blue Origin. That's the most precise date given for the mission, still the maiden flight of New Glenn. At a NASA advisory committee meeting last November, an agency official said the launch would take place within about a year, and other presentations listed launch dates from August to November for the mission. So we can hope that Blue Origin's only rocket capable of reaching orbit will complete a flight, even if it's just one this year. But in reality, Blue Origin itself has not yet announced an official date for the launch of New Glenn. This inevitably dims our hopes for a timely debut. They always promise a bright future, but lack specific announcements for it, unlike the very clear schedules from their competitor SpaceX. That's also part of the reason why the enthusiasm from most space enthusiasts is not directed toward Blue Origin. In February, Blue Origin rolled out a Pathfinder rocket model to the launch pad at Cape Canaveral's Complex 36. The company used this vehicle to test the launch infrastructure, including fueling the rocket. Everything on the pad is real New Glenn hardware, the company said in a statement on February 21st about the Pathfinder vehicle. However, the vehicle lacked BE-4 engines in the initial stage, and some components of the Pathfinder were not flight hardware. Despite this, Blue Origin still diligently promotes its rocket. New Glenn's reusable first stage aims for a minimum of 25 missions and a land on a sea-based platform located roughly 620 miles downrange. Why is reusability so important? It reduces waste and radically lowers the cost per launch to increase access to space. Do we smell gunpowder here? New Glenn seems poised to compete with SpaceX's entire rocket lineup. The ability to partially reuse up to 25 missions and land on an offshore platform similar to SpaceX's Falcon 9. The payload New Glenn can carry into space is 45 tons, larger than Falcon 9 and closer to Falcon Heavy's payload of 64 tons. Indeed, like a 2-in-1, all the conditions of New Glenn will provide an advantage if it's competitively priced. The rumored price for New Glenn is reportedly the amount of the contract NASA awarded to Blue Origin, which is $20 million. But surely, this figure is the loss-making amount for a single New Glenn rocket launch. SpaceX has stated that just the Falcon fairing alone costs $6 million to manufacture, so there's no way that amount is less than a third of the materials of the new Glenn fairing. To me, it seems Bezos is essentially foregoing any profit margin for new Glenn development and pricing it low to get market share. That's not surprising considering what Amazon does. It's a traditional business. There's no way that a launch priced at around $20 million can have that much of an impact on the return on investment of billions of dollars. This is clearly a smart and very long-term investment but will it pose a challenge to SpaceX? Unfortunately for Blue Origin, SpaceX hasn't rested on its laurels and hasn't stopped moving forward. SpaceX is vigorously developing its new system in the form of Starship, using a previously unprecedented approach to partial reuse and taking it to the next level of full reusability. By the time Blue Origin flies New Glenn, SpaceX will have put Starship into orbit, and the game's going to be over. Elon Musk will once again tweet, ha ha, just like he did when Jeff Bezos' flight only skimmed the edge of space. But it must be said that SpaceX's Starship is developing rapidly, and no rocket can match it in terms of power, payload, functionality, and price. On February 10, 2022, CEO Elon Musk announced he was highly confident that Starship launch prices would be less than $10 million all in, fast forward two or three years from now. Including all SpaceX expenses, he also said a Starship flight could cost a few million dollars or maybe even as low as a million bucks a flight in the future. SpaceX has a history of hitting its launch prices, so these targets should be taken seriously as long-term possibilities if the flight rate gets high enough. 
Additionally, SpaceX's system's ability to refuel in orbit allows it to carry this high payload anywhere in the solar system. And it's hard to imagine what could beat that even 100 years from now. So the question is why Blue Origin will never catch up with SpaceX, and they even fail to achieve their own lofty goals. Is it possible Bezos was just wrong from the start? A clear culprit? Bezos' innovation system. The method is he applied to guide Blue Origin employees on setting priorities and carrying out their work. Back in 2004, setting up such a system was particularly important to Jeff Bezos, who was tied to Amazon, intended to dedicate only one day a week to a space startup and hoped it would operate efficiently and autonomously. Surely, the old industry recognized that the fastest way to become a billionaire in space is to start as a billionaire. He wanted to limit his investment and move deliberately, funneling all the lessons and technical decisions into the next project. At that time, it was highly unlikely that someday the government would pay private space companies to explore the cosmos on their behalf. So, alongside crafting Amazon's praise leadership principles, Bezos wrote an 800-word memo, unofficially titled Welcome Letter. To this day, it's handed to new Blue Origin employees as part of their recruitment package and discussed annually in all-hands meetings. Within Blue, it's treated as very important as Bezos' shareholder letters to Amazon. On the surface, there's nothing to fault, but it also describes some assumptions that have been proven wrong and are believed to have hindered Blue Origin. Bezos wants to keep Blue's engineering team small-scale. He believes the constraints have spurred innovation, and he spoke of developing space vehicles at the cadence of a software project, incorporating new ideas in frequent iterations, and using as much off-the-shelf technology as possible. This approach works effectively at internet companies like Amazon, where bugs can be easily patched. But at a resource-constrained aerospace company, it's a recipe for flaws to creep into systems that require meticulous checking and hardening for flight. In 2011 and 2014, Blue Origin lost test spacecraft in its suborbital New Shepard program to dramatic explosions. The welcome letter also makes it clear that Bezos doesn't see space travel as a competition and believes Blue Origin can achieve its goals methodically. But it's a race, and it's no surprise the hare eventually beats the tortoise. Elon Musk founded SpaceX two years after Bezos founded Blue Origin. But by 2010, SpaceX had 900 employees, while Blue had 275. By 2017, Musk had hired over 5,000, while Bezos limited his growth to 1,000. SpaceX contrasts with Blue Origin. It completely bypasses suborbital space travel and focuses on building orbital rockets as well as securing contracts from the federal government and commercial satellite manufacturers. This allows them to dream up more ambitious versions of the Falcon 9 rocket and capture the public's imagination. Blue's a conservative poker player at the table when a brash newcomer shows up and completely changes the game. Today, Blue Origin has strayed far from most principles of the welcome letter. It has thousands of employees, pursues multiple projects at the same time, not just one at a time, and receives massive annual cash injections from Bezos' fortune, up to nearly $200 billion. To date, the total amount has reached somewhere between $10 and $20 billion, a remarkable figure. But the company is still struggling. Many employees described a demoralized workforce, and slow decision-making leads to endless delays. That's why there was a shakeup in leadership at Blue in late last year. Bob Smith, who was the CEO of Blue Origin for nearly half a decade, was fired. Smith's tenure was marked by stagnation. Now Bezos has hired Dave Limp, a former Amazon executive, to lead Blue Origin, a decision that could help Blue Origin grow faster. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.